So today I'm going to show you the best way that you can do a hand hem. Let's get started. Hi, what is up YouTube? My name is Cassie and you are watching Cassie Sews, the channel dedicated to helping you become an expert home sewist from your home sewing studio. Today, we're doing part two of the secrets to a great hem. So if you guys recall, I have this beautiful dress. It is my friend's dress. Um, and we're just trying to hem this up. I had a hem pinned. She wants it about five eighths of an inch shorter than what I had originally pinned. My dear friend has been waiting far too long, far more than what is socially acceptable. This thing's getting finished. But I will include it in the link down below. Those early steps to a great hem do include the measuring and the cutting and the pressing so that you have something ready to sew. I always find that if I press everything into place before I begin, um, I already see the win. All I'm focusing on then today is the stitching. Everything is already pressed and pinned into place. You can see that the we have the quarter inch hem turned down and then everything is pressed. I believe this is a one and a quarter inch hem depth. It's all pinned. All we have to do today is the hand sewing. So today All right, everyone, we're just gonna take a minute to talk about the supplies we need for completing a hand sewn hem. One of the items we need obviously is thread because there's many shades of brown and white going through this dress. Um, I just chose a fairly neutral shade from my sewing stash. Um, this is a regular weight sewing thread made by Gitterman in the 100 meter spool. And I will put a link below for a, a group of Gitterman threads that you could buy together that gives you a bunch of basic colors. Guys, I do find the Gitterman brand is very good. There's other brands that are really great too, but right now we're talking about this one. So this is what I'm talking about right now. And um, I do find a, like I have a quite a bit of my thread collection at least half if not more is the Gitterman brand so I'm going to put a link down below where you could purchase a multicolor kit or if you just scroll around on Amazon you could choose an individual spool as well and if you do I may get a small token um, as an Amazon affiliate so thank you for that definitely you want to get some good quality thread the next thing you're going to need is a sewing needle. So I was showing you guys, I'm just using a fairly standard um, length sewing needle. Now with the sewing needles, it is true that if you buy the cheap sewing needles, they can have like little burrs at the end of the thing, or sometimes there's the where the eye of the needle is the thread will catch um, because it's not quite smoothed correctly um, and they can bend easier and a bunch of stuff like just there actually is a difference with sewing needles. I would recommend spend the extra couple of dollars and buy a branded name sewing needle or if you have an off brand you know is good then use that. So just to show you what I'm using is John James sewing needles and they're just your regular sharps. This is ranging sizes 5 to 10. You're going to want to remember with sewing needles, um, the bigger the number, the smaller the needle. The smaller the number, the longer or larger the needle. So these are, you know, your basic in-between type sizes that you would use for various projects. The packaging for the link I'll put in Amazon below is slightly different than this, but it's the same brand. So I highly recommend them. They're great needles. So remember, I had pulled that out earlier and um, we're just going to leave it sitting in there for now. Anytime you're doing hand sewing, it's really great to have a thimble. It can really spare you a lot of little aches and pains. So I'm currently using a tailor's thimble, which you can see is hollow at the top. You can actually see all the way through it. I use it on my middle finger and when I have it on there, it does fill enough with the, the tip of my finger comes out because you're actually using the side or primarily pushing with the front part here when you use an open style thimble like that. So it's designed to help you not, you know, fatigue tendons in an incorrect way. So that's why it helps train you to use the front side of your thimble. There are good times and places for closed thimbles as well. No critique on them at all. This is just what I am enjoying using right now. 
And so of course I will put a link down below. The next thing that you're going to want to have handy is um, some thread snips. So these ones are by a company called LDH. I will put a link for this down below, but this you can't get on Amazon. But what I have done for you is looked up a very similar looking and feeling product on Amazon. It's a branded name that you can buy. It has good reviews. So I did put something similar in the link below, but I'll also link this actual company's product as well. I'll do a review or talk more on these in another video. We're going to leave that for now, but you're going to want to have a nice um, pair of snips handy. And if you spend a few extra dollars and invest in a nice pair of snips, you will actually really enjoy using them and it won't shred your thread or anything. It's worth the money, guys. Definitely do it. And then, of course, you do need pins if you are pinning a project so that you can hem it because you see we have this all pinned and ready to go in here. And so you're going to need a pin dish. So the one that I'm using is a rose gold magnetic dish. Um, this has been so fantastic. With this, I didn't like it when I first got it because th the pins didn't naturally settle into this nice spiral. A lot of them were standing straight up like they can do like that. I don't know. It, it was a real mind shift for me. But now I've come to love it because the pins do stay in the dish. They do tend to settle if you just put them down with the ends facing in, like the pointy end in. It will naturally settle into a spiral like that that actually just makes it easy to pick one up again as well. And with it being magnetic, it will cling to anything metal around it. Like watch this. It will. It's a strong magnet, okay? So anyways, I would highly recommend getting one of these. They are fantastic. I will put a link in the description below for this as well. And so there it is, guys. Now we have our garment that has already been measured, cut, pressed into place, pinned, and is ready to sew. We have all our supplies pulled out, and now it's time to do the hand stitching. So there's a lot of colors going on in this dress, as you can see. So I found something that you know, it's complementary to everything going on in there. And I think, you know, we'll just help make the stitching any threads that may show less noticeable. The next thing that you're going to want is a needle. I tend to store needles once I take them out of the original packaging on a felt square, just so I know they're not brand new from the box anymore, that they've been used on a project. But then I keep them separate from pin. And so you can see I have a variety of length of needles there. We're just taking a regular length needle and that's what we're going to use for this hem. So I'll just store that there for a second. I wanted to show you something kind of cool and interesting with this dress. Remember I said it's vintage. Look at this. Look at this. Let me try and hold that little curly piece back. Do you see that? It says Union Label and it says Canadian Syndigil International Ladies Garment Workers Union, right? And I guess that might be a union number or something at the top. And then look at the back. On the back, someone's initials AJ and I'm guessing what is like their union employee number or something. So look at this is verifying that this garment was stitched at a time that there was a workers union for ladies that were sewing or men, obviously, but typically in this age, I'm guessing it would be female dominated. And there's a label. What a cool little piece of history, eh? So I didn't take that out of there. I'm leaving it right where it was. I don't want to you know, change any integrity to your garment. I don't have to. And so we're just going to hem right over it, but we have this all pinned and ready to go. So the style of hem that we're going to do today is just called a slip stitch hem. So it's a very simple, basic running stitch, basically, that's going to go all around the garment. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to cut some thread. So here's how I always do my thread. This is, I guess, a quilter's trick that I've been quilting since I was a newlywed. So that is uh, just something I know, right? So anyways, you take your thread, wrap it around your elbow, and then up about halfway, back up your forearm, 
This usually ends up being approximately 18 inches long. I think you'll find it's a pretty handy size to have. You get some length to work with, but you don't have to worry about the thread running out too soon. So the next thing we're gonna do is take our needle and we're gonna thread the needle. So we're just gonna push it through the hole. There are needle threaders if you need to have a needle threader as well. In any event, we have the thread pulled through and now we're ready to start sewing. So then, ideally you're not going to make a knot, um, but I do not at the end, I just can't handle it guys, I have to, <laughs> but I'm okay with starting it without a knot because we can bury it in the hem, right? And so you just leave a bit of a tail. Uh, we're gonna stitch around this. From here, here's what you're gonna do. You're just going to go inside this um, seam and catch some fabric. Let's grab our thimble. Make sure we have our thimble on and handy. All right. And we're going to pull that through. Of course, it catches right away. I will point out that you can run your thread through beeswax if required. So if your thread is tangling, you could just uh, snip it off and start over. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is when you're starting, we're gonna to wanna to leave a tail that's a little bit long. So let's just pull that in, you know, about two inches like that should be good, should be plenty. So we're just gonna tuck that out of the way. And now we go find the needle here. All right, so we have the thread anchored and we have our sewing needle. And now we are going to run a stitch. So it's quite simple really. All you're gonna do, you're just gonna catch a thread of the fabric up top. In this case, we can jab it in there because it's right on the seam line. You're gonna come up through, use your thimble here to push through near the tip of the fold of the hem and pull it through. That's one stitch. Now from where it comes out, do you see the straight line here? right where it comes out, you're simply going to go back in right near the fabric, take a thread, and you're gonna go through the fold of the um, hemline and pull. And that's it. Your hem will end up being almost invisible. Try to make your stitches a little longer. Like now that we have this going, once I get onto the light beige where I can see a little more, we are going to lengthen the stitch just a little bit. All right, so there we go. We have our hem started and anchored. So now the next, we're gonna go in here. We're gonna catch just a thread. A bonus with this, as you can see, this is lining fabric. So it's almost like cheating because we could probably just jab right through that but we want to be careful we're not catching that outer fabric so we're still going to hem it traditional all right so you are simply going to catch just a thread of the lining fabric come up through the hem at the fold and pull now you can simply move over about a centimeter and you're going to catch just you want to be just above the hem you want some hang you have to remember everything about sewing is gravity it hangs by gravity right it hangs by gravities from your shoulders or your hips and so a hem also hangs by gravity from its connection points so if if it's too much right on top of each other, your hem could sag and droop from where you've pressed it to. So you are gonna wanna be just slightly above. You don't have to be much at all. You're gonna just catch a thread. To be honest, guys, I have to take my glasses off and get really close to do this. So this is probably catching more than a thread. One second, let's just, hold on. We're gonna do this, sorry. So that I can see. That's a thread. I'm gonna come up through the hem and pull like that. So it's not completely invisible hem. 
but it is discreet. That's why I chose a thread that matches the garment as best as I could so that it just helps add to the discreetness of the hem. But this is all that you have to do is you just keep catching a thread up through the hem and then move over again about a centimeter. I think I need to lengthen my hem stitches ever so slightly here. So catch a thread through the hem and pull. Move over a good, you know, almost centimeter. Catch a thread through the hem, push, pull it through. There you go. Okay, so I just wanted to say with all transparency, my hand stitching isn't great. Okay, guys, this is an area that we are going to become expert home sewers together. So as you watch my work, I know intellectually what I'm doing, but can I make my hands obey and make these precise half centimeter apart, stitching all the same height and width and stuff. It's a challenge, man. It's a challenge. So all I can do is just show you really honestly and transparently where my skills are at right now and hopefully you guys can join along. The reason I bring that up is the only way we're going to get good at something is to keep doing it, right? Time in the chair as the saying goes. Honestly, time in the chair is what's going to help hone that excellence if you're pursuing excellence while you do it. So we're going to continue on with the rest of this hem, but I wish I was like a hand stitch ninja. I'm not, but maybe with time, both you and I will be. Let's keep going. everyone here it is friends the dress hem is done you can see inside here all the hand stitching that has been done to this outfit now all that's left to do is press it and we're ready to pass it back preheating the iron loosen off the uh, steam here and we're just gonna press and steam a little. And what we're doing here is we're shrinking into place those bits of fabric that we had eased into place while we were hand hemming, because you may have noticed a few gaps where things were slightly wider than what we were sewing, right? We got that workers union label there as well. Now look where I have pressed. It's a seamless perfection, guys. This fabric is amazing to work with too. It's some sort of a polyester type 
What can I tell you? It works really great. Now, I have not pressed the entire dress, guys, but you can see where I have pressed. This hem is great. Let's just tilt the camera up a little bit more here so you can see, once again, the bottom hem of this dress has been pressed out. And as you can see, you can't see any of the hand stitching lines but they are all there and in place. Again, you can see guys, my stitching is still a little up and down. I'm not the most amazing hand stitcher, but I'm gonna hone that skill. But in the interim, what we're gonna do is press out the rest of this here beautiful little dress. And then that's gonna be all done. So here it is everyone, the finished dress. Once you see it on an actual dress form, doesn't it look so fantastic? And don't we all wish we had this ideal figure? It looks pretty good. The hem is done. In these last two videos, the live one and this one, you have learned the secrets to a great folded and pressed hem. You can apply this to any traditional hem that you need to use. And I'm happy to have been able to share those parts of the project with you. And speaking of projects, I look forward to seeing all of you at the next project with your needle and thread at Cassie Sews. Thanks so much for tuning in guys. See you next time. Bye.